What is up ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's your boy Goblin and today we're coming in with a beautiful tier list video. I hope you guys enjoyed this one, drop a like if you do, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and also we have a grinder drop available now, this is limited quantity, link is in the description. Listen, these grinders dropped the other day but the website crashed so we decided to put aside just a little bit of the stock for a separate YouTube drop. This video is your notification for that drop. Grinders are available now, limited quantity, lifetime warranty, made in the U.S. What more can you want? Head over to the website linked in the description below and get your hands on a grinder before they're gone. Thank you guys for supporting and thank you guys for watching this video. Without further ado, let's dive right into it. Now in today's video, we're going to be talking about the most dangerous drugs. And as you can see here, we have got five different tiers to rank them in. Going from deadly, which is the worst and most dangerous tier, all the way up to usually safe, you know? Now the reason that this is flipped around and deadly is at the top is because obviously we're talking about the most deadly drugs. So I felt like they should be at the top. But let's go through the list of drugs that we've got here real quick. So we've got a picture of Robitussin up here. That's going to resemble your cough medicines. We've got Xanax, which is not labeled because you can read. We've got heroin. We've got cocaine, which I labeled both in case you guys weren't familiar. We've got opiates and meth, the beautiful Heisenberg blue meth. We've got crack and lean, which are two drugs that suck. We've got DMT and ketamine. The ketamine I labeled because, listen, not everyone knows what liquid ketamine looks like because it's clear. It looks like water, okay? Quite honestly, if you just gave me a water bottle full of ketamine, I'd probably just take a giant swig of it and fucking die. Then we also have MDMA and LSD. And last but not least, we have weed and we have shrooms. So, let's get this party started, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go ahead and start off with DMT. This beautiful substance right here. Now listen... DMT is generally regarded as a pretty safe substance. You're not going to overdose and die on DMT. Um, you're not going to, to have those typical negative physical health impacts. However, you could potentially have some mental health impacts, right? You might have a bad experience on DMT, but in general, this is a pretty safe substance. If you're just going to take a quick hit of it, you're in for one hell of a ride, but you're in for a ride that's not really going to put you at risk, which is why we're going to put DMT in the usually safe category. Now, there's another thing I want to talk about in terms of these rankings. We're not necessarily deeming a drug dangerous just because it kills you. There's multiple factors that can make a drug dangerous. So, for example, if it impacts your mental health negatively, or it impacts your physical health, but maybe in a way that doesn't necessarily kill you, right? That is still a dangerous thing. That is still a dangerous substance. If it poses a risk to you, or it poses the risk of negatively impacting you, then it, it, it could be considered dangerous dangerous. So I just wanted to get that out of the way because I know there's going to be some people who are going to be like, Goblin, why did you put, you know what, let's just go to the next drug. Let's go ahead and go to the next drug. What should we pick? Let's talk Xanax here. Now, Xanax, you're, you're going to see what I mean in a minute with this ranking system. See, Xanax is something that you're not necessarily going to take an overdose. There's a lot of fake Xanax out there, but that's not what we're talking about. We're operating on the assumption that when we're talking about this drug, you have the 100% authentic version of it. So if we were counting, you know, if we were counting fakes and counterfeits, Xanax would be in the very top region of this. There's a million different Fent bars that you could go get from a million different plugs right now. Hell, I could probably walk outside of my apartment building and find a neighbor to serve me some Xanfen. I don't think it would be that difficult. However, just because straight Xanax will not necessarily kill you doesn't mean that it's not dangerous. There's a couple reasons I say that. First off, Xanax is truly a gateway drug. I know that, you know, the, the label gateway drug is kind of frowned upon, and people used to say that about weed, which we all know is obviously not true, but Xanax is truly a gateway drug. It is a gateway drug to opiates. I know a lot of fucking people who have started taking Xanax, and eventually their tolerance got super fat. They were chasing that kind of super cloudy, relieved feeling that Xanax gave them. And what did they graduate to? opiates every single time. When you become addicted to Xanax, very rarely will you be a person who is just forever taking Xanax. 
you will eventually reach a point where you have one of two options. Either A, you quit and go cold turkey, which is very difficult, and I have friends who have had seizures trying to go cold turkey off Xanax, or you graduate to something stronger, like an opiate, right? Like heroin, like fentanyl, something like that. I say this because I have watched countless friends go down this path. I know so many homies who back in high school, we used to just pop bars casually every day, wake up before school, on the way to school, pop a Zan on the bus. Just got out of school, let's take another Zan. It's lunch period, Zan time, baby. I don't want pizza, I want the triangle Zans. Now, listen... Xanax is a very fucked drug because when you get addicted to it, it's extremely difficult to quit. In all honesty, I believe that Xanax is almost as hard to quit as heroin. I mean, I'm not saying that because of my personal experience. I've never done heroin. I'm saying that because I know a million and one bartards who are to this day still bartards because they can't fucking quit. Because of these factors, we're going to put Xanax in the very dangerous category. Now, once again, I want to remind you all that that's not because it's going to kill you, but it doesn't have to kill you. It will lead you to drugs that will actually kill you, and that's the problem. It, it, this, this drug is the devil. This drug is the devil. I know there's probably some of you that are out there right now watching this video barred out of your fucking minds. Listen, just cut it out, man. Just cut it out. I know it's not that simple, but just cut it out. All right, next up. Oh, wait, hold on. I forgot to rename the shrooms. There we go. All right, next up, since we're on the topic, let's talk about them. Shrooms. Now, shrooms are, in my opinion, the novice, you know, the easy mode of the psychedelic world. If you're someone who's never done shrooms before and you're looking to get into a psychedelic, you know, shrooms are the way to go, honestly. You can microdose them and they have a lot of actually studied health benefits, right? There, there's a wide array of benefits to taking even just small amounts of shrooms. But even if you take a big fat dose, you can be comfortable and, and you know, safe realizing that A, you're not going to overdose on it. B, it's all natural, which is a huge, huge plus. Massive plus. The vast majority of drugs on this list are not all natural. I mean, for God's sake, we've got shit like heroin on here. Meth. Do you know what the fuck meth is made of? Look it up. It's not fun. But shrooms are nice and all natural. You can grow these in your goddamn bathtub if you really want to. The only potential risk is if you have an underlying mental health issue and you take a psychedelic, it could bring that out. However, that is an overarching thing with most drugs, so I'm not going to necessarily pin that on shrooms and give it a different ranking because of that. In general, I view shrooms as probably one of the safest substances you can consume. And because of that, we're going to put it in the usually safe category. I mean, honestly, I've had nothing but chill experiences except for my first time taking shrooms. But even then, I never had a situation where I felt like I was truly in danger. I mean, sure, you might get nauseous a little bit if you take too much. Sure, you, you might throw up, get a stomach ache, but that's really not a very big deal. Now, next on the list... Let's talk about cocaine. Now this one, oh, I love this one. I'll tell you guys right now, I, I have been a raging coke addict for a long time. Not anymore. I'm, I'm all, about a year sober now. Besides that little bump I did back in June, we don't have to talk about that. But other than that, I'm about a year sober from coke. Can I get a round of applause, please? I'll clap for myself because no one else is here. But either way, coke is quite frankly the devil. Okay? This drug is awful for you. Say goodbye to your heart, okay? Your cardiac health is out the fucking window. Even your nose, when you're regularly railing it, your nose will just start to fall apart. You can get holes in your nose. Your nasal cavity will just start collapsing and weakening. This drug is awful for you. And also, on top of that, even if you're getting some extremely pure, non-cut cocaine, you know, which most of us are not getting, even if you are getting that absolute top shelf, you know, super pure, best possible coke, it is still horrible for you. It is still made with a bunch of bullshit chemicals that you should not be ingesting. Cocaine can also kill you. This is a drug where you can actually overdose and die because you will just get a fucking heart attack. Because of this, we're putting cocaine in the deadly category. Cocaine is one that you don't necessarily want to fuck around with. You know, we, we might put it in a lower deadly because obviously cocaine has a cousin that is also very risky, but 
Coke is a dangerous one because it's very easily accessible, kind of like Xanax. This is a drug where you really don't have to try very hard to get your hands on it. Because of that, it's going in the deadly category. Now let's go to the next substance on our list. Take a look here on the right, on the bench. Who are we pulling off the bench today, everybody? Let's talk about meth. This is like cocaine's big fucking angry tweaker cousin, okay? Meth is, is a substance that will completely ruin your life, right? You will stay up for days on end tweaking your balls off. You will end up in a psychosis at some point if you continually stay up for days on end doing this. You will start hallucinating by staying up. And the interesting thing about meth is it's not actually the drug itself that is making you hallucinate, but it's the lack of sleep and the lack of self-care that puts you into that state. When you start smoking meth, your body is just falling the fuck apart. This is not a very safe drug. Now, actually overdosing directly from meth and dying is not extremely common. There aren't a ton of fatal meth overdoses out there. However, it's more about the other problems that meth causes. Staying up for days, your heart rate getting fucked with, right? Putting you into a psychosis. This substance can affect you negatively, very negatively, both physically and mentally. We're going to put it in the very dangerous category, and the only reason that it is not in the deadly category is because actual direct fatal meth overdoses are not extremely common. I'm not saying they're very rare, and I'm not necessarily saying that meth is safe, because it is awful. The toll it takes on your body is unfucking believable You are just smoking a cocktail of random chemicals that no human is meant to be ingesting. But... However, we have to acknowledge the fact that you're not going to necessarily directly overdose and die from just meth. It might cause a heart attack, right? It might make you stay up later than you want, you know, for more time than you wanted to and start to get fatigued, which can cause heart problems, which can cause psychosis, cause a lot of issues. But the meth itself is rarely going to directly kill you. And that's why we put it in the very dangerous category. Cocaine, on the other hand, we already talked about that. That one will fuck your shit up, dude. I mean, your heart will just explode on this shit. Now, next up, we're going to talk about DXM. Cough medicine, your average over-the-counter goodies. Now, listen... DXM is something that is not the most dangerous substance in the world. However, the issue with this is that your average consumption is not going to be just pure DXM. Often, you're going to end up with a cold medicine that has other ingredients in it that can impact your health, right? The only exception to this rule is if you're getting something like Robocough or Delsim, I believe, has only DXM as the active ingredient. They might have changed that, but back in my day, it was only DXM, which, hey... Delsim was kind of hitting, dude. My little degenerate high school self, we were sipping that shit like water, brother, all right? But either way, back on topic here. The acetaminophen, I hope I said that right. I probably didn't. The guaifenesin, the other things that are in these average cough medicines are extremely bad for your liver. They can cause chronic liver failure. However... I don't necessarily feel that it's fair to blame that on DXM because if you are drinking something that is just straight only DXM, let's say you have some pure DXM to consume, the the substance itself is not necessarily dangerous, right? You're not really going to overdose on it unless you take an absolutely astronomical inhuman amount, right? You can still have health problems from it, and of course, if you take a shitload of it, you will have a bad experience, but in general, it's not necessarily going to kill you. We're going to put it in the somewhat safe category solely because more often than not, you will be taking it when it has other active ingredients in it. It will be rare that your average person is taking just pure DXM. And obviously, if you're watching this video and you're someone who does actively consume DXM, you should look into finding more pure options for that if that's really the route you want to go. Obviously, quitting DXM is ideal, okay? DXM is is just a struggle drug, all right? No one that has money actually willing does this drug. It's a drug for porons, I'm sorry to say. But either way, let's move on. Now let's talk about opiates next. Now, I know there's going to be a lot of people in the comments that are like, well, opiates, you know, you can get fake perk 30s and die. But we're not necessarily talking about your average opiate there, right? We're talking about something that's cut. 
In order to make this list fair, we're going to only be referring to the pure, non-cut, real versions of these drugs. So when you get an actual prescription opiate, let's say it's a Percocet, let's say it's a Narco, let's say it's a Hydro, an Oxy, something like that. Do they even prescribe Oxys anymore? I don't think they do, dude. I don't know. I, I was never very big into the opiates. I've done them all, but I never really would say I was addicted to any of them. Thank God. This is an awful drug category, but... The thing with opiates is very similar to Xanax. This is the ultimate gateway, okay? The shitty thing about this is opiates, kind of like Xanax, they can be prescribed to someone who is not a drug user, right? You could just have your average soccer mom who sprained her ankle, and now she's got fucking 60 perk 30s at her disposal. What's she gonna do? She's gonna get fucking lit. That's what she's gonna do. That's where the problem arises with opiates, because if you just take, you know, a few of them, you won't necessarily overdose. The long-term health effects, if you take just a couple of them, is not going to be absolutely awful if you're taking just pure prescription ones. However, you can still overdose on these. When you look at the stats for opiate deaths, you might think that this is the most deadly category out there. You might look at this and say, wow, this should be on top. However, a very large portion of those deaths are from synthetic opiates, right? So cut products that are cut with fentanyl or other very dangerous substances. Your actual prescription opiate from the Walgreens, from the CVS, or wherever you go to collect it, is not the most dangerous thing on this list. However, it is a very slippery slope, it still is not very great for you, and because of that, we're going to put it in still the very dangerous category. However, it's going to be a little lower than the meth and the Xanax, right? The Xanax deserve to be higher because, listen, Xanax, in my opinion, is the ultimate gateway drug because opiates, they have a stigma, right? People still view opiates and they go, oh, you shouldn't take that, you know, you might end up doing heroin, but when people look at Xanax, they don't say the same thing. Xanax is still viewed as almost cool in a way, you know? It's socially acceptable to be a bartard. Listen, I don't know why that's the case. If it were up to me, it wouldn't be, but here we are. Now, let's go ahead and move on to our next substance. Since we covered opiates, I feel it's only fair to cover heroin next. Now, I don't think a ton really needs to be said here. Even if you're getting the finest, purest fucking heroin, it is still made up of garbage. It is still made up of absolutely awful chemicals that you shouldn't be ingesting, and it will still kill you. And if it doesn't kill you, it will have an awful impact on your body. We're going to go ahead and give heroin its rightful throne as the worst and most deadly drug on this list. We'll throw cocaine up there as well, you know, but just right behind the heroin. We know where heroin deserves to be here. Now... I have had numerous friends who have become heroin addicts over the years, and it is a sad sight to see because it completely destroys a person. It, it's not necessarily just about the risk to their health and the overdose and the death, which is still very likely and possible with regular heroin abuse, but also the way that people just deteriorate when they become heroin addicts. They stop taking care of themselves. Every heroin addict I've ever known has just become skin and bones, right? They lose weight. They look gaunt almost in their face, kind of like a meth head, but honestly even worse. I mean... I have never in my life known a functioning heroin addict, and I know that a lot of people like to claim that they are. Ashton claimed he was. A lot of my other friends claimed they were. And those people are most likely, the majority of them, not around to say the same today, right? And if they are, they're probably too fucked up to say it. Heroin is awful. I hate this drug. I hate it because it has done so many awful things to very good friends of mine. Heroin is the single most dangerous drug, the biggest risk you could take in the drug world. You could pick pretty much anything else off this tier list and it would be a better fucking idea than doing heroin. Even meth. Even meth. That's all I have to say about heroin because it's fucked. Let's move on to the next substance. Now next up, let's talk about my good friend Crack Cocaine. I smoked this one time in high school. For those of you guys who don't know, you can go watch my Crack video. It's probably pretty easy to find. However, Crack is pretty much cocaine on cocaine, right? You're getting all the same negative health benefits. You're getting a pretty much a condensed cocaine high. Imagine if, you know, 
for example, after you do a line of coke, typically you're, you're feeling pretty geeked, pretty good for maybe I'd say 30 minutes on average, 20 to 30 minutes, sometimes a little longer if it's some really crazy shit, but we'll go with 30 minutes. Imagine if that 30 minute period of you being, you know, pretty lit and up off the coke was condensed into a two minute time frame. It was put on fast forward, right? So you're getting the most intense, fast paced experience of your life. The other issue that arises from that, right, is that crack is is not cheap, right? Crack is not cheap because you have to do it so often if you're a crack addict. Crack belongs in the deadly category because, I mean, it is it is just as bad as cocaine. In fact, I think we're going to put crack above cocaine. Crack is like cocaine's angry, tweaker, alcoholic uncle who still beats the family regularly. He shows up at the family gatherings and will start throwing bottles around until your parents have to escort him out. And then he gets disgruntled and posts something angry in the group chat and then you do it all again next year. That's crack cocaine. We're putting it in second place in the deadly category. Next up, we're going to talk about lean. Now, lean is an, an interesting one. Because this is literally just a liquid opiate, which in my opinion is very dangerous just in itself. An opiate where you can consume it just by finishing a drink. You could just chug that shit if you wanted to. I mean, that is risky. It is difficult to find an appropriate or reasonable dose for this shit, especially when you have a tolerance for it. There are quite a lot of accidental overdoses on this substance, as well as it causes a wide array of health problems, but the most common one that everyone knows about is it absolutely destroys your liver. You will not have a liver anymore after you are a lean addict, alright? It's just gonna fall out of you pretty much. You might just shit it out one day. I mean, realistically, it's horrible for your body. It is, however, very comparable to opiates, because like I said, It is just a liquid opiate, which is inherently fucked, right? That's absolutely terrible. Imagine if, you know, some pharmaceutical company came out and they were like, yo, here's a fucking pint of Perk 30, just a liquid. I know all you fiends are going to be in the comments like, yo, when's that shit dropping, bro? When's that shit coming? Give me that. Give me that. But listen, that is a horrible idea. For some reason, a dickhead at whatever company first synthesized codeine and promethazine in a liquid form decided that that was appropriate, and now we have lean. Because of that, I'm putting lean in the very dangerous category once again. Lean is not extremely safe. You should not do it. And on top of that, it's very expensive. So have fun becoming poor if you end up drinking too much of it. Or you could go to cut shit, which is even worse, and then you just die. Either way. Let's talk about the next substance on the list, LSD. Now, LSD is another one where you're not necessarily going to die from an overdose. In fact, it's pretty much impossible to die from just a direct LSD overdose. However... LSD is a substance that can have a bit more intense of an impact on your mental health, right? This substance, I know a ton of people who have put into psychosis from doing acid. I know a guy who's been in and out of psych wards for years now just because of one bad acid trip he had when we were juniors in high school. I know a ton of people who swear that they will never try this substance again because they had one bad trip and it scarred them so badly. This is essentially the synthetic and slightly scarier version of mushrooms, right? And obviously, it's not quote-unquote a version of mushrooms because there's many, many differences, but they're in the same substance category, which is why I say that. Your visuals are going to be more intense than shrooms, of course, but with it are the side effects that will be more intense. This stuff is not natural, and also... Long-term usage of this substance is not very well-researched yet. We don't necessarily know all of the impacts and effects of LSD consumption. We know that it really fucks with your mental. We know that it can definitely cause psychosis. I mean, some people get into psychosis is so bad that they're just completely insane. However, you're not going to overdose and die from an LSD trip. You could eat a whole sheet of this shit, and you're just going to be in for the ride of your fucking lifetime. However, the mental risks have to be acknowledged here, because in my opinion, they are more significant than shrooms, solely because of the fact that LSD is a much more intense experience. It lasts much longer. It's, It's very difficult to manage when you're trying to come down, right? I mean, sometimes you can just get completely overwhelmed and just freak the fuck out. 
Because of that, we're going to put it in the somewhat safe category. Now, you're not going to die from it, but you might end up in a very bad mental state, which is something that needs to be covered. So somewhat safe is a fair category. Now, next up, let's talk about ketamine. Ketamine is a substance that it will not kill you from direct overdose, right? You're not, you're not going to get a fatal ketamine overdose. Chances are, if you consumed an amount that could even be considered causing that effect, you would just get fully K-holed and pretty much black out before you would ever reach that point. However, there is one big thing that ketamine does to the body that needs to be covered. K-cramps. Your bladder. Now, I'm telling you right now, if you want to have stinging pisses for the rest of your life, if you want your cock to tingle every time you have to piss, just do a little bit of ketamine, brother. That's all there is to it. Just do a little bit of ketamine, man. Your cock will tingle every time you even have the slight sensation of needing to pee. I have a friend back in high school who used to get K cramps so bad that he would literally lean over in math class and start moaning in pain from it. The only way to alleviate this problem was going to the bathroom Bathroom and doing more ketamine. This substance is, you know, although it might not kill you, it is still not very good for you. It was never intended for human consumption either. This is a substance that was made to be used in veterinary offices. They tranquilize horses with this shit, and you're sitting there snorting it. Think about that for a minute. I love ketamine personally, but I stopped doing it because I still wanted to be able to piss in 10 years. So that's why we're going to put it in the somewhat safe category. Honestly, you know what? I think we might move it to somewhat dangerous because I care about my cock and I don't want it to hurt. So we're going to put it in somewhat dangerous because I just want to be able to pee safely. The drugs down here in somewhat safe, I'll be able to pee on them for the rest of my life. In fact, pissing on acid is a very fun fast pastime. I said fast time. What am I doing, dude? I'm kind of stoned. But either way, let's just move on to the next drug. Now, next up on the list, let's talk about Molly, MDMA. We're talking about the pure form. Now, taking too much of this substance can cause strokes and heart attacks, which can obviously kill you, as you guys probably know by now. However, this drug also completely cooks your fucking brain, fries it like a goddamn omelet. I mean, I have never felt stupider in my life than the day after a Molly trip, the day after rolling on Molly. I have never felt dumber in my life than that day after, and it's every single time as well. This drug puts your brain in a skillet, turns the heat to high, and flips it every five minutes, and you're roasting that shit the entire experience. I met a kid one time when I was in rehab who was a raging Molly addict, and I had never met someone who was addicted to Molly the way he was. I mean, I knew people who would take it regularly, but I had never really met anyone who took it every day until this kid. I met this guy, and he told me about how he would roll every day. He was like, yeah, man, I was taking like .5 every fucking day. And he could not finish a sentence without stuttering. He could barely finish a word without stuttering. It completely destroyed his ability to speak. The, uh, the impact that this has on your brain is not even all the way known yet. We don't necessarily know the extreme long-term effects of this drug on your brain, but we know just from the amount of research that has been done that it is very toxic. It is neurotoxic and it is toxic to your body as well. This is a substance that is once again dangerous. Despite how good it feels, it is very dangerous. So we're going to put it in the very dangerous category. And last but not least, we have our best friend. Our beloved brother, marijuana. Now, I don't really think very much needs to be said here. I smoke weed all day, every day. I am a raging mental addict of marijuana, all right? However, it's not going to kill me. And even if it did, honestly, I'd probably still keep smoking that shit. We're going to put it in the usually safe category. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen, the most dangerous drugs tier list. Let's start from the top and go over everything again. In first place, we've got heroin, the absolute biggest demon on the list. Then we've got crack and cocaine, also in the deadly category. A category below, we've got Xanax, meth, opiates, lean, and MDMA. These are all things that can be deadly. However, you, you kind of have to go to some extremes for them to be, 
or it is just uncommon for them to be deadly. The exception to that is Xanax. Xanax is the only one in this category that pretty much will never directly kill you. However, it is such a slippery slope that I still felt it should be put in this category. Next up, and somewhat dangerous, we have ketamine. Now, ketamine is, like I mentioned earlier, gonna destroy your cock and balls. But you know what? If you don't care about that, go crazy. Then in the somewhat safe category, we've got Robitussin and LSD, which, you know, I mean, they're safe. They're safe. You're not gonna kill yourself taking these substances. However, they're still not ideal for your body. And in the usually safe category, we've got DMT, shrooms, and weed. So if there's any advice that you could take from this video, it's go smoke a massive DMT blunt. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out, gamers.